In this tutorial, we'll discuss why and when to use semantic HTML elements over divs. All right, so I just have a couple of examples for you. But first of all, why do we even want to use semantic tags instead of divs? Well, first of all, it's easier to read and scan the HTML if it has been properly structured with these semantic tags. And I'll show you why in a second. It's also better for SEO. It makes it easier for those search engines like Google to come to your website and properly index all the content that's on there which in turn will make it more likely that you rank higher in their search engine results, right? So you get more traffic. And it's also better for screen readers or assistive technology um, to properly, you know, categorize and index what's going on on your website. So it's also better for accessibility. These are the three main reasons for why we want to use semantic tags. So let me actually just give you an example of what a very typical HTML boilerplate would look like. So this is currently basically an empty HTML file. Now, globally speaking, you're going to have a header usually a main section and a footer section. And so these are already semantic tags because you could also use divs, right? You could use divs. Div stands for divider, right? You could you could use that. Um, practically, they would work the same. But in practice, if you want to use semantic tags, this is what you're going to get. So header is usually for introductory uh, content, you know, the, the logo, like the introductory links. The main is really for the, the dominant content on the page. And the footer is for, you know, maybe some other links like terms and conditions, uh, privacy policy, not really important stuff going on there. So in the header, then typically you also have some kind of nav. So the nav is really for the most important links on the page or the, like the most important navigation on the page. Typically people structure it like this. So you're going to have a list of links. So in a list, we have LI. So it's going to be quite nested here. And then in here, you're going to have the actual anchor tag. Right, so usually you're going to have a bunch of links here and then maybe you also have like a logo, right? The logo uh, could be just an image, let's say. Right, so you would have an image in the, in the header and then you would have a nav. Right, so it's quite nested here, but this would be a pretty typical semantic uh, structure in the header. Then in the main, the dominant content on the page, usually you're going to have a bunch of sections as it's called. Right, so in practice, a lot of people would use div, but it's better to use section. And I'll show you some practical examples on real world access, uh, websites in a second. But usually the main consists of a bunch of sections. Right, and then in the section, you can have a heading, right? So maybe an H1 or H2. And you would say something like uh, about us, maybe, or maybe some kind of a benefit section. Let's do that. It's a bit more realistic. And then perhaps a paragraph section with a bunch of words. Right, that would be a section and then you would have another section benefits instead of benefits we would have something like um how it works right and maybe some paragraph with a bunch of text so in practice what you see a lot of people do is they use div here but it's better to use section so why section instead of div um i'll show you that in a second uh, on real world access uh websites um but in practice what you also have in the main sometimes is have some kind of sidebar or some related content that's not really the not really uh something that should get the focus but you could have something like an aside in here as well that's also what you see sometimes so this is could be for a sidebar or something like that you're also going to see the article tag sometimes it's a bit trickier this one this one is more suitable for if you can pull out this content and place it somewhere else and it wouldn't lose any meaning right so this is a bit more um rare and then in the footer usually um you know you're gonna have a bunch of links maybe some text but here you would also use that nested structure again except now you wouldn't use the nav right? so nav is typically more common in the header because this is actually meant as you know a really important um, set of navigational links or you know navigational section if it's really important it probably shouldn't be in the footer right so here you wouldn't see the nav tag right so this is a really common uh, a you know semantic setup that you would see and now we're going to look at some actual websites to see how they've done it and i'll show you some of some examples for those more rare tags as well like article and a site all right so this is the stripe website but honestly i could have picked any landing page because they're they're all quite similar so we can inspect here and we can see how they've marked up their html so in the at the top we indeed see um, a header here right so here they have a logo they have a bunch of important links and they have this sign in button right so that's a header for them um, they have a bunch of divs in here in here because sometimes you need to use a div simply for stylistic purposes let's see if we can find a good example here doesn't look like it maybe we'll find a, a good example of that later 
But here we have a, a section. So this is what they call the, the hero section, right? Really the, 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 the thing you look at first when you, when you come to the website. This is a section because all of this is related to each other. It's like a way to introduce their company or their product. It's all related to each other, this heading and this text and this, this uh, graphic. It's all, uh, it all has the same semantic purpose. And that's why it should be a section and not just a div, right? So if it would not be related to each other and you would only need some kind of element just for layout purposes, purposes from stylistic purposes you would use a div right and then we get to this section here and let's see so they used a section tag again and this is actually just a bunch of images actually right these images well what what it represents is the type of companies that use right so this is like a credentials for, uh, for them and because each image here belongs to that same semantic purpose it they, they all should be in a section tag and not in a div right because a section means that the content in there is related to each other it has the same semantic purpose so it's better to use the uh, section tag now why not use the article tag here well an article tag means that i should be able to pull this out of here place it somewhere else and it would still have the same meaning or it would still be clear what it means but if i would take these images out of here and i would put it somewhere else on a different website or somewhere else it would just be a you know collection of images. It wouldn't mean anything. It wouldn't mean the same as it means here, which is that these companies use Stripe, right? So this only makes sense in the context of the Stripe website. And therefore, this is not the article tag, but a section tag. All right, so then if we go down, you're going to see a bunch of other sections they have that showcase why people should use, right? So they want to convince the viewer to use Stripe. So here, let's see this section. It has to do with... Uh, an overview of their product and it's a section tag because all of this in here is related to the to it to, to a an overall semantic purpose right so this heading is not some standalone random piece of text right it's it, it's a heading that describes everything else that's also part of this and so it's all related to each other right that's really what it comes down to with section versus div right so this is a section this is a section and usually it's quite easy to identify them on these landing pages um, but this is a really typical example of sections versus divs all right now let's take a look at the mdn website uh, the developer.mozilla.org so if you go to one of their um, uh, articles you can see that um, we have the actual content, we have some header on the top, and then we also have this sort of uh, sidebar. So let's see how they have marked this up. So here we can see um, this is the main content. So you're only going to have one main tag on your page because it's for the, the most dominant content on the page. And they've used an aside tag for this sidebar here, right? And actually, you could make the argument that the aside never should be in the main because it's not really part of the dominant content, right? So um, you could make that argument. And then in the main, we see an actual article tag here. So here they actually ch chose article instead of section. So article is actually a bit more like there's an additional requirement. That's how you can think of it. So section just means that everything in there is related to each other or it has the same semantic purpose. With article, the same has to be true, but I also need to be able to take this out of here and put it somewhere else and it should still make sense. And that's actually the case here. I could take out this all of this text here, you could put it somewhere else, but it would it would still be the same. It would still have the same value essentially, right? So it would still be clear what it is, and therefore it should be an article tag. Another example would be if, for example, they had some kind of job posting here, right? Maybe they they have some kind of um, you know job post that would also be a good candidate for an article tag because I could take the job post out of this website, I could put that somewhere else, maybe on like um. Um, a, a jobs website and it would still make sense there right it, it, i could put it on any other website and it would still make sense that article tag is self-contained it explains itself it ex you can you can look at it you can read it you can consume it and it's clear what it is what its purpose is what it represents and therefore you want to use an article tag now this is quite rare the aside and article tags you don't use that much you, you, don't, you don't use it often in most of your projects you're going to use the section tag and a bunch of divs okay so here they also have some kind of navigation here so this is maybe interesting uh, to look at as well so here they use the section for that actually they use an aside for this overall piece and then they use a nav tag again and that's right so you're not only going to see a nav in the header but also sometimes outside of there if it's an important set of navigation which it is right so this like a table of contents is an important uh piece of navigation so you could opt for using the nav tag there this all may seem a little bit confusing um, and overwhelming in practice you know if you would if you didn't use nav here but you used just an ul perhaps or maybe a section instead of a, an aside 
all of that is generally fine in practice um you know it it doesn't matter that much for readability of your HTML. The search engines don't really care that much. I mean, they, they, they must be pretty adept at this point to dealing with, with unstructured HTML because most websites out there are quite unstructured. So all of this doesn't make that much sense, uh, you know, to, to spend a lot of time and energy on. But, you know, if you want to be precise about it, that's how you would do it. Now, I want to give you one example of where you would use the div instead of the section, right? Because now we've seen a couple of examples of where to use something else than div. So then where should you use actually, where should you actually use divs? Well, basically everywhere else. So here, for example, and this is one of my projects from my CSS course. Here we have a bunch of, like we, we have some, uh, well, these are breadcrumbs. And then we have some other button on the other side. Now this is not really related to each other. They're just stylistically speaking in the same uh, white bar here, but they have different, um, purposes right they, they don't have they're not they don't belong to the same semantic purpose but they are still stylistically in the same bar here and therefore you probably need some kind of element in your html to get the proper layout so in that case um you want to use the div actually right so here there's some kind of info bar uh, but they're two different things this is breadcrumbs i used a section for that because the text the text in there they all belong to the same uh well overall semantic uh goal and this is a button tag but they are two completely different things they don't have anything to do with each other but i still needed some kind of element to, to get this layout right so here i wouldn't i would not use section i would use a div by the way if this was helpful i'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe also check out my courses on css and javascript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level because in there we will build some beautiful real world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master css or javascript and i will also release other courses soon like react and node.js so if you want to be notified then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter you can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.